One noon, the neighbor aunt called, saying that my uncle got into a fight over a piece of farmland and ended up in the hospital. To my surprise, my mom overheard the conversation, her legs trembling as she clutched the chair back, urging me, quick, we need to go home. Seeing her so agitated, I didn't want her to go back, so I lied, telling her that my uncle's situation wasn't serious, just a few days of rest in the hospital would be fine. Before I could finish speaking, I received a slap across the face. My mom's eyes turned red as she angrily exclaimed, your uncle is in such a big trouble, and you still treat him like an enemy. Are you even human? Leaving these words behind, she forcefully freed herself from my grip, almost stumbling over a chair, but she stubbornly headed towards the door. Watching her anxious figure, I feared that this time, I couldn't stop her from meeting my uncle. One is my blood uncle, the other is my biological mother, how could I possibly agree to them being together? Since my earliest memories, I pieced together the story from rumors and jokes left by my father. My mom had been married to my dad for less than half a year when he formed a new family outside. When my grandfather found out, he had him brought back. But my dad stayed calm for only a few days before secretly running away again. By the time they went to look for him, he was nowhere to be found. But by then, my mom was already pregnant with me. After that, the village laughed at the marriage she forced upon herself. My grandfather fell seriously ill, and before I was born, he passed away, leaving only my mom and my uncle, two years younger than her. Feeling ashamed, my maternal grandfather pushed my mom, who came seeking help, out of the house when he found out about my dad's actions. It was a night pouring rain, my mom, heavily pregnant, had no hope left. If my uncle hadn't found her and promptly taken her, who had jumped into a pond, to the hospital, there would be no us mother and son in this world. On that night, I was born prematurely and placed in an incubator. My uncle didn't dare to leave easily, he stayed by my mom's and my side. It wasn't until I turned one that he went to work outside. Although my uncle was talented, since then, he remained unmarried, working away from home, giving all the money he earned to my mom. Some said my uncle had exhausted all his benevolence and was not worth it, dragged down by my mom. Others claimed my uncle had ulterior motives, harboring inappropriate thoughts about his sister-in-law. There were also rumors that they lived together for some days every year, and it was feared they were engaged in illicit activities. It was because of these rumors that people often teased me on the way home from school, asking if I now called my uncle dad. For this, I don't know how many times I beat people to a pulp, and how many times I ended up with a swollen head. But my fists couldn't stop others' malicious slander. I could only vent all my grievances to my mom in a chaotic rage, calling my uncle on the phone and venting my hatred, why aren't you getting married? Or do you really want to be my dad? My hysterics hurt the two people who cared for me the most. My uncle never returned home again, and my mom became even more silent. In the quiet of the night, I would often hear her sobbing softly. Perhaps only by leaving could I take my mom out of the sea of suffering. I secretly made up my mind, focusing all my attention on textbooks, turning humiliation into strength, burying myself in study. After entering junior high with top grades, I quickly rose to the top three in the class. Whenever I achieved outstanding results, bringing back various competition awards, my mom's face would light up with unprecedented pride. She ignored everything around her, as if those rumors could no longer hurt her. I knew she had been enduring it all for me. I swore to use my efforts to help my mom break free from all this pain. And this family, my uncle, was the root of all the suffering. After three more years of hard work in high school, I finally got into a well-known university in the provincial capital. I returned home, and after six long years, he, in his early forties, appeared with a head full of white hair, adding infinite vicissitudes to his handsome face. But when his eyes met my mom's, even though he quickly averted his gaze, I could still catch the fleeting glimmer in his eyes. He started to show goodwill towards me, trying to improve our relationship. This made me realize that they had reached some kind of agreement. I couldn't shout at him like I did when I was a child, but a cold glance from me was enough to repeatedly thwart his attempts to speak. Every time this happened, my mom would look at me steadily. In her gaze, there was helplessness, injury, and a hint of disappointment. Although it felt uncomfortable, I couldn't care about that much anymore. My uncle didn't go out again, he rented a storefront in town and started selling daily necessities. His thoughts made me speculate more. Various speculations from the villagers swept in again. Like prophets, they asserted, see, they couldn't wait. 
They're just waiting for Xiang to go to the provincial capital for school, haha. <laughs> Some even made more malicious speculations. Do you think they might have had a thing going on early on, so Xiang's dad ran away? Xiang is probably his uncle's child. Otherwise, who would willingly wait so long? My mom's face, which had just lightened up a bit, was once again shrouded in an indefensible sadness. I ran to the town like a madman, intending to question my uncle, why did he come back? He was the source of the storm. As soon as he got close to my mom, the unfounded accusations would turn her into ashes. But what did I see? He and a woman of similar age were chatting and laughing in the store. The woman even reached out to pat my uncle's shoulder, in an intimate and natural gesture. I couldn't restrain myself from rushing forward to expose him, but I froze in my tracks. Perhaps, this was the best arrangement. I inquired about their relationship from the neighboring shop owner, who sighed, it's really fate. According to the woman, the man was her first love. For some unknown reason, she later married someone else. Now, six months after her divorce, they unexpectedly met again, and both were single. In the following days, I stayed near the store every day, witnessing the woman visit my uncle's shop, spending a good part of the day there. She occasionally helped organize the goods, and my uncle couldn't stop her. I recorded their interactions and turned it into a video to show my mom. Her face turned pale, and she said nothing, just repeatedly wiping the tables and chairs with a cloth, head lowered. But before I could expose them, the woman came to demonstrate. With resentment on her face, she said, If it weren't for you, how could I have broken up with him back then? How could I have married an abusive man, causing me to miscarry and lose the ability to bear children? You harmed me, and now you're harming him, spreading malicious rumors about him for so many years, making him unable to hold his head up? I pushed her out of the door, but she continued to rant, Why don't you get married? How can you live with yourself? You used up all his money, and you still cling to him, not letting him live his own life? My mom, enraged, fainted on the spot. Upon hearing the news, my uncle rushed to the hospital. He knelt by the bedside, tightly holding my mom's hand, lamenting, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It's not what you think. I never paid attention to her. I'm sorry, it's my fault. But my mom, tears streaming down her face, just stared at the ceiling. My mom was the victim. What was he trying to achieve with his antics here? I pushed him away, saying, Uncle, just spare my mom. Every time you come back, those rumors chase after her. One day, she will be driven insane by all of you. Are you going to let her live like this? My uncle hesitated for a moment, lips trembling, unable to speak. Tears rolled in his eyes. Seeing my mom turn away, he stood for a while and eventually turned and left. But who would have expected that my uncle's ex-girlfriend's background would once again push my mom to the forefront of the storm? She was branded as the mistress, and wherever she went, people pointed and talked behind her back. My mom escaped back home, closed the door, and refused to step out again. At that moment, I hated my uncle to the extreme and wanted nothing to do with him anymore. My mom constantly mutters, questioning why she married my dad, why she gave birth to me, why she clung to my uncle's care. Her regretful expression scares me, fearing that she might do something foolish. I stay by her side, guarding her day and night. One morning, as I went downstairs to cook, I heard her crying and laughing in her room. My heart skipped a beat, and I rushed upstairs, but she had locked the door. No matter how I called out to her, my mom ignored me, muttering to herself, Okay, okay, remember, it's that piece of land. After saying that, she started crying again. A thought flashed through my mind, and without thinking, I kicked the door open. She was startled, and her phone slipped from her hand. Approaching her, I examined her expression closely. My mom, equally gazing at me, seemed to stare at me for so long that I thought she might not recognize me anymore. But she spoke first, Xiang, what's wrong with you? Her clear call instantly transformed into a pair of soft hands, steadily catching my heart that was plunging into panic. It made me both frightened and relieved. I don't know if it's because of me, but my mom pretended to be strong for my sake, recovering remarkably well. When the time came for me to start college, she urged me to enroll. These four years of college were the most agonizing for me. I had to guard against my unmarried uncle having contact with my mom again while constantly worrying about my mom's mental state. Fortunately, my uncle didn't bother us anymore, and the rumors disappeared without a trace. After successfully graduating from college, I also signed a contract with a multinational company, earning a good salary. Finally, I brought my mom out.
I thought that in a new environment, my mom would gradually become happy. However, she always seemed absent-minded, sitting alone on the balcony lost in thought, becoming increasingly thin. Until one day, when the neighbor aunt called, mentioning my uncle's injuries, my mom couldn't remain calm anymore. After all, he was my uncle. I couldn't turn a blind eye, so I hurriedly brought my mom back to our hometown. When we arrived after several hours of driving, my uncle was lying in the county hospital. The incident had already been resolved with the intervention of the police. The other party was at fault from the beginning, and my uncle refused mediation after they compensated. They had to give up. The reason was that an elderly person in the village passed away, and without my uncle's consent, they took a piece of our land for a burial site, claiming it was an auspicious feng shui location. Upon learning this, my uncle vehemently opposed, and the family had to offer double the market price as compensation, which my uncle also rejected. This angered the villagers, accusing my uncle of being heartless. When they saw my uncle persistently refusing, they rushed him and knocked him to the ground. The result was that my uncle lay in the hospital bed, unable to move, his entire body bound with bandages, his face swollen beyond recognition. Approaching, my mom, seeing my uncle in this state, extended her hand hesitantly, anxious and unable to touch him. Tears streamed down her face, scolding, it's just a piece of land. Let them take it. You're foolish, letting yourself be beaten like this for a worthless piece of land. Though blaming, her tone was filled with uncontrollable heartache. My uncle, with eyes cracked at the corners, looked at my mom for a long time before managing to squeeze out a few words, I'm fine. My mom cried even more intensely. Over the past few days, she stayed overnight in the hospital room, not allowing me to intervene. Even when taking care of my uncle's basic needs, she did it herself, every movement gentle as if caring for a newborn. I couldn't bear to watch, so I pulled my mom out of the hospital room. If the villagers see this, who knows what they'll say. I'll arrange for someone to take care of my uncle, you come back with me. My mom, unlike her usual submissive self, glared at me and said, I'm not going back, and I won't go back in the future. I couldn't believe it. Since the day she went to the provincial capital with me, I thought she was prepared to let go of my uncle. It turned out she never intended to put it down. Looking through the window at my uncle on the hospital bed, her face unexpectedly flushed, her tone gentle yet firm, Xu Yang, I want to be with your uncle. She didn't allow me to object and continued, you know, do you know why your uncle fought so hard to get back that piece of land? That piece of land is where we agreed to be buried a hundred years from now. He said that if he couldn't wait for me in this lifetime, he would be there, accompanying me. We would still be together. But after this incident, I don't want to wait anymore. Why should we wait until that day to be together? What's the point? I've realized, just like your uncle, if you stake your life on it, others will be afraid and back down. Why should we entrust our happiness to others' judgment? He said everything is up to you. If you don't agree, he won't trouble you. Do you know how good your uncle is? Back then, he was prepared to give a dowry for the bride, but he gave the money to me for childbirth and bought you milk and clothes. Later, he worked outside to earn your tuition fees. We've been waiting, waiting for you to grow up, thinking that as you grow up, you will accept us, understand us. But you, more than those rumors, have made us feel heartbroken. At this point, my mom cried, I don't want to make your uncle suffer anymore. These years, he's had it hard. I have you with me, but who cares about him, understands him. Finishing her words, she wiped away her tears and looked at me, this time, regardless of whether you agree or not, I'm staying. I'm also prepared. Let them say whatever they want. I don't believe they can control our lives. My mom's words made me blush. Clearly, they cherished each other, suppressing all emotions to consider my feelings. But what have I done? Instead of supporting them, I shifted all the blame onto the most innocent person, becoming the catalyst for rumors, subjecting them to humiliation. If only I could discern right from wrong, show more understanding towards them, and unite with them, how could others gossip harm us even a little? Why let them postpone their happiness to a hundred years later? How could I bear to let them continue to be separated, to miss each other again? How much do I owe them, not just a simple thank you or apology? I pulled my mom to my uncle's bedside, placed my mom's hand on his, and then deeply bowed to my uncle, uncle, I'm sorry. From now on, you are my father. A month later, I held a grand wedding for them. At the wedding, in front of all our relatives and friends, I recounted every detail of my uncle's care for me over the past 20 years, 
narrating their unwavering love for more than two decades. As soon as I finished speaking, thunderous applause erupted from the audience. Yes, their love deserved recognition and blessings. Rumors are not frightening, what's frightening is believing in them and yielding to them. When we face them calmly, they naturally disintegrate on their own.